hi guys welcome to my channel i am so excited to have you all join me for my first video on this channel at least one that talks about true crime cases i am so excited to be here to be talking with you guys um i've been wanting to do this for a long time but i finally got the time the courage the just like you know the motivation that's the word um, but anyways, today I will be discussing the case of Charles Ross. Without any further ado, let's get right into the case. On July 1st, uh, 18, 1784, four-year-old Charles and his older brother Walter um, Ross, they were basically playing in their family home in um, Germantown. This was a wealthy neighborhood in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania when a horse-drawn carriage um, pulls up in the front yard and two men get out. Now, these men walk up to the boys and ask the boys if they would want, or if they would like fireworks and candy. They would have to take a ride with these men. Hmm, pretty suspicious, right? Well, the boys were, they were young and they actually knew these men. These men would, um, visit these boys way before July 1st, keep bringing them candy, and um, these were no strangers. So the boys wanted the candy and fireworks because, you know, they were kids. And um, the offer, it was too hard to resist. So they got into the car and they were driven around uh, Philadelphia to the store where Walter was asked to go into and buy fireworks with the 25 cents the men gave him. So Walter agreed and he went into the store to get the fireworks. But he comes back out and he sees that the horse-drawn carriage is gone and so are the these men and his brother. So um, where is Charles Ross? Well, he is kidnapped by these two men. Um, and after this, so Walter obviously, like, you know, the parents find out, the Ross family finds out and um, everyone's looking around for um, Charles Ross, but there is no development in this case until Christian Ross, Charles's father, found uh, finds this um, note in the mail uh, from a post office in Philadelphia that basically tells him to bring this ransom of twenty thousand dollars, which was a lot of money at that time and if he wanted to see his son alive and not to contact the police or Charles's life would be in danger. So I think it is believed that the kidnappers believed, yeah, believed, I just said believed a lot of times, but um, that the Ross family was very wealthy because they had a big house and Charles's father, he owned this small dry foods store so they were not wealthy though this was far from reality because um of the great depression the no the stock market crash sorry what am i talking about the stock market crash of 1873 um, and the family was in a lot of debt so the father knew he wasn't he would not be able to pay pay twenty thousand dollars so he had to you know ask the police for help even though knowing that, you know, his son's life could be in danger because the kidnappers had specifically told him not to contact the police, but he had no choice. You know, he wanted his son back and he thought this was the best advice. So he went ahead with that. And this case um, quickly reached the national news. Everyone knew about this case. Um, and there were some people in Philadelphia, again, because it reached national news, obviously everyone around knew what was going on. They asked or... Yeah, they asked help from the, here, let's see, the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. And what the agency did was they printed out flyers and posters of Charlie, Charles Ross, Charlie Ross. His name's not Charlie Ross, his name is Charles Ross. Charles Ross, and it had his picture and like his description. So if people were to see him, they would contact the police. Um, but there was also a popular song that was called Bring Back Our Darling, and this was composed by Dexter Smith and W.H. Brockway. Just the title of the song, it sounds like so, um, 
sounds like a plea but it also like you know composing a song it just they're trying to stay optimistic you know there 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 were also several attempts to basically um give the kidnappers the ransom and uh, the kidnappers however wouldn't show up you know they wanted their son back um they wanted charles ross back but the kidnappers eventually stopped communicating with them overall so fast forward to december 13th of 1874 in roy bridge brooklyn new york there is a judge charles moan brunt and his house is burgled yeah his brother holmes Juan brunt lived conveniently lived next door and he basically organized this group of armed men and to stop the intruders and um Holmes Wan Run marched over to his brother Charles's house and um, there was this like gunfire between the two men. Yeah, there were two men, by the way, and his armed men. So what happens is these two are shot. The burglars are shot and their names are discovered. One of them is Bill Mosher and the other one is Joe Douglas. And these were two career criminals who were recently just released from prison. Now, Mosher, Bill Mosher was instantly killed um, from the gunfire. But Douglas, Joe Douglas, was gravely wounded. But he would live for approximately another two hours. And so he was able to communicate with Holmes, Charles Wanbron's brother. Now, um, Douglas admitted just randomly that he and Mosher had abducted Charles Ross. And at first he said Charles Ross had died, but then he retracted what he said. And he said that Bill Mosher, who had just passed away, he knew where Charles was and that Charles would be returned to his family within a few days. But Joe Douglas did not have any clue where Charles Ross could be. Like his whereabouts were known to Joe and he would soon die afterwards. So now Charles Ross's brother, Walter, he is taken to New York City to look at the bodies of Bill Mosher and Joe Douglas. So he could determine if these were indeed the two men who um, were in the horse-drawn carriage. Um, and Walter confirms that, yes, these were the two same men who took him and Charles um, the previous summer. Now, Bill Mosher was very identifiable to Walter as he had this like malformed nose, which Walter described as a monkey nose, which is kind of funny, to the police. And despite the identification of the kidnappers, Charles Ross was still missing. There was no clue. The police had no idea where he was, which was which is really sad and frustrating for the parents. Now, former F Philadelphia policeman, William Westerled, on is an acquaintance of Bill Mosher, and he's also Bill Mosher's wife's brother. Now, the police um, basically charged him with kidnapping. He, however, maintained his innocence, and he said he had no idea where um, Charles Ross could be. Um, and during the time that he was in, like he was awaiting for his trial, his, you know, he was charged for kidnapping. He basically talked to Charles Ross's father, Christian Ross, and said that, um, your son is alive, uh, or was alive at the time of Bill Mosher's death. That's all he said, but there was no evidence that the police found that they could charge, um, what was his name? Villier Vesterwald for the kidnapping case. So they um, had to let him go, but then they caught him again for, um, and they charged him with conspiracy. And for this, he had to spend six years in prison. Then he got out and he has maintained his innocence ever, st ever since. And he said that, um, no, uh, I do not know where, or he doesn't know where Charles Ross is. Um, so that is his charles ross's whereabouts were still unknown and two years after the kidnapping christian ross charles ross's father published a book called the father's story of charles Ro charlie ross the kidnapped child to raise money to continue searching for his son um because by 1878 like yeah two years after um the case the interest in the case began to lessen um because there were no do new developments in the case and christian ross and his wife continued to search for their son until their deaths but there were still no new information you know there were several um men over the years who claimed to be charlie ross but they were all imposters you know they were just there for the money the fame the attention none of them were charles ross 
and uh, Charles Ross's body was never discovered. No one knew what happened to him. But a common saying came from his case. It's believed to have come from his case that says, don't take candy from strangers, which I'm sure all of us has heard, have heard at some point. Um, and Charles Ross, uh, there's this, what's it called? The Charles Ross, Ross Project. Um, and this is basically a missing persons database that is named after Charles Ross. And um, that concludes today's case. Uh, if you liked this video, please make sure to uh, like this video. Yeah, click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and uh, tell me down in the comments below what case you would like me to cover next. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.